So we have always been using logs for various purposes. Let it be using them to watch over the console activity or the internet traffic activity or the REST API calls or even the terminal logs to understand what exactly is going on as and when we perform a certain activity. And working with logs in VPC is also no different. You would always want to keep track of the internet traffic that you have that is coming in or going out of the VPC. For the same, we make use of the VPC flow logs. So let's talk more about that. So VPC flow logs is a feature that enables you to capture information about the IP traffic going to and from the network interfaces in your VPC. So remember this very carefully when you read this being a feature then imagine having an option to switch it on or off for a service that you're currently using. That's the same reason why it's rightly mentioned here that VPC flow logs is a feature that enables you to capture information in the form of logs. And you can publish the flow data or the flow log data to Amazon CloudWatch logs or Amazon S3. So if you wish to see the logs, you have to go to either of these services and view them. And yes, there are a lot of benefits of using flow logs, but these three points have been actively mentioned in the documentation as well. So the first point is monitoring the traffic that is reaching your instance. That is helpful as you can review the incoming request and analyze or make changes to the application depending on what type of logs you are receiving. And the second one is also very useful diagnosing overly restrictive security group rules. So in case there are issues with connectivity to the instance or the services that you are trying to access, it can also help you figure out the issue. The number three that we have is determining the direction of the traffic to and from the network interfaces. So another thing that you will understand when you see the log formats or VPC flow logs is that it contains the information about the source and the target instances or services that the logs are being sent to or received from. And that also can help you with debugging. So let's move on and understand how we can use the VPC flow logs. So you can create VPC flow logs for three entities. So the first one is VPC itself or the subnet or a network interface. So if you enable it for a subnet, all the instances and interfaces within that subnet will also be monitored. Neat, isn't it? Let's see how it does. So when you think of log, any event that occurs in the pieces of entities that you see here will generate entries that contain information about what exactly has happened. And that piece of information or the entry is called as log. And the flow log data for a monitored network interface is recorded as flow log records. But if you wish to publish logs, you must keep these three steps in mind. So the first step is the resource for which to create the flow log. So it could be your instance or subnet or VPC. And the second one, the type of traffic to capture. So it could be either your accepted traffic or rejected traffic or it could be all the traffic. And the third one, the destination to which you want to publish the flow log data. That is either if you want to store them as a file in S3 or the CloudWatch log stream. So if you see the visual here, subnet A has the VPC flow logs enabled for the instance or the network interface and it publishes logs only for that. But when you see on the right hand side, the VPC flow log actually has been enabled for the whole subnet. And as I have already mentioned before, this will cover all the instances V3 and V4 and the network interface that are part of the subnet. Unfortunately, as nothing is attached to the instance V2, it actually misses out on the logs. Simple, isn't it? And we can create flow logs for the interfaces that are created with Elastic Load Balancing, Amazon RDS, Amazon Elastic Cache, Amazon Redshift, Amazon Workspaces, NAT Gateways, Transit Gateways. So many of them are here. So that actually gives us a lot of provisions to enable VPC flow logs and monitor these systems. And you can send them to CloudWatch or Amazon S3. That's one added advantage, isn't it, that we get. So now that we have seen how we create the flow logs, let's see the log format. So the syntax of the flow log is similar to this, which contains a lot of information and I didn't want to discuss all of them. But here are a few important ones that I wanted to discuss. So the first one that you have here is version. So the VPC flow log version, if you see here, we have already mentioned that the default format actually specifies the version S2 and it will choose the highest version among the specified fields. 
so if you specify the version to be 2 then the highest version is 2 and it will choose that version is 2 and if you specify a mixture of fields let's suppose version 2 comma 3 comma 4 it will pick the highest number from there and it will choose that as the version of the version of the log so that version will be 4 because we have mentioned 2 comma 3 comma 4 so the next one is account id so it's very evident by the name itself so the aws account id of the owner of the source network network interface for which the traffic is recorded the interface id so basically every network interface that you have will have its interface id and that also will be recorded as a part of the traffic and source address source addr the source address for the incoming traffic that will be your private ipv4 address and the destination address the destination address for the outgoing traffic that you have so that will also be your private ipv4 address the source port it's very evident that it's the source port of the traffic and the destination port also has been mentioned so next one is protocol so we all know that what the protocol means so it's the iana protocol number of the traffic so iana is basically internet assigned number authority so so that organization is basically responsible for maintaining the collection of registries for protocol numbers and the next one is action action is very important because action that is associated with the traffic so it can be either accepted or rejected so for the accepted the recorded traffic was permitted by the security group and the network acl and if it gets rejected then the recorded traffic obviously was not permitted by the security groups or network acl so here you can identify from the logs itself that there, if there is any problem with the network ACL or the security groups with the permissions. And the last one that we have here is log status. This is also very important. So the status of the flow log. So there are three statuses that we are seeing here. So one is OK, one is no data and one is skip data. So the OK, OK is basically data is logging normally to the chosen destination. So there is no problem with that. So no data. So there was no traffic from or to from the network interface during the aggregation interval. So we'll discuss about this aggregation interval because let's suppose for a specific period of time, there is no data that has been captured. Then you say that there is no network traffic to and from the network interfaces and there is skip data. So, so here what happens is some of the flow logs are being skipped during the capture window or what we call as aggregation interval due to some internal error. So these are all the information that are very valid information that you can get with the log formats when you're using VPC flow logs.